Hi, welcome to our channel, Classic Chevy Revival. I'm Kevin Hellner, and on this video, we're going to be researching Fuzzy Dice, Car Culture's Iconic Origin. You know, I've owned many Tri-5s, and I think the first thing I bought for each and every one of my cars was a pair of Fuzzy Dice. And I was just wondering why and when did the tradition of hanging fuzzy dice in the windshield of our car start? And have you ever wondered how a simple pair of fuzzy dice could take on a life of their own, becoming a symbol of luck, rebellion, and even danger? So join us now as we roll the dice and unravel the history of these iconic car ornaments where the story is as fuzzy as the dice themselves. So buckle up for a journey through time and culture, exploring the origins of the fuzzy dice phenomenon. So how did a pair of dice become so much more than just a game of chance? The common lore says that fuzzy dice began from a pilot superstition in World War II. Before taking off for a sortie, pilots would put a pair of dice on their instrument panel with the seven pips showing for good luck. Another perhaps grimmer variant of the story is that the dice on the panel were a reminder that every flight was a figurative roll of the dice as to whether the plane would return safely to base. And considering that by 1942 the United States was losing quite a few aircraft per day, pilots really had a right to be cynical about their chances. Every flight was a gamble and only the lucky winners got to go home. In the 1950s, the fuzzy dice became one of the first items sold specifically to be hung from a rear view mirror. And the Encyclopedia of American Social History notes that during the 1950s, young adults were drawn to cars that were customized for speed, painted with vivid colors, stripes, and flames, also having tuck and roll interiors, and the fuzzy dice were suspended from the mirror and rock and roll on the radio. Also, nobody knows which street racer hung the first pair of plastic dice over his rear view mirror, invoking the old pilot superstition and cynicism. However, before long, pl plastic dice became part of the look that identified the alternative culture, like a pack of lucky strikes rolled up in a t-shirt sleeve. Displaying the dice meant the driver was ready and willing to be dicing with death in the dangerous and unregulated world of street racing. Car customization and personalization were on the rise during the 1950s and the 1960s, and people were looking for ways to make their cars stand out and express their individuality. Fuzzy dice were a relatively inexpensive and easily attainable way to add a touch of personal style to a vehicle's interior. Fuzzy dice are often associated with the rock and roll music and youth culture of the time. Many iconic figures and movie characters from that area were depicted with fuzzy dice in their cars, further solidifying the association with the culture of the time. Fuzzy dice may have also symbolized a sense of rebellion and freedom, hanging them in a car often associated with the open road and adventure. Could have represented a desire for escape and excitement. But over time, a pair of dice over the mirror came to symbolize a different type of battle, street racing, or as it was called back then, dicing with death. Rumor has it that if you pulled up next to a car with dice on the mirror, so you want to think American Graffiti here, not the Fresh Prince, then the driver was ready to race when the light turned green. Also, nobody knows which street racer hung the first pair of plastic dice over his rearview mirror, invoking the old pilot's superstition and cynicism. However, before long, plastic dice became a part of a look that identified the alternative culture. Kind of like a pack of Lucky Strikes rolled up in a t-shirt sleeve. Displaying the dice meant the driver was ready and willing to be in the dangerous and unregulated world of street racing. While that might explain why a handful of military personnel embraced the dice and why a small group of thrill seekers adopted the trend, it doesn't quite explain why it became such a phenomenon. One possible explanation is car magazines. According to the Detroit Free Press, hot rod periodicals of the 50s put the dice on display in photo layouts, likely causing readers to seek them out for themselves. And most of the first dice were made from plastic, and these plastic dice started melting from hanging out in the windshield with the exposure to the sunlight. 
So at this point, manufacturers started experimenting with uh, different materials, and they finally settle, settled on foam or fabric dies, which became known as fuzzy dice. But why fuzzy? Well, at the time the dice were being hung from mirrors, American culture seemed preoccupied with furry coverings. One car catalog of the 1960s offered prospective buyers an interior covered in angora-type fur. The material covered car seats, steering wheels, and doors. From the 1950s to the 1980s, you could see a handful of cars with the fuzzy dice on their rearview mirrors. Everywhere you went. So, since then, they've grew in demand. Many companies started manufacturing them in different sizes, colors, and styles. And due to this, every person could find a fuzzy dice decoration to match the color of their car or their favorite color even. So, although hanging something from your rearview mirror can be considered dangerous as they can block your vision, some states have laws preventing anything obscuring the front windshield that might interfere with the driver's field of vision, including air fresheners for that matter. And Fuzzy dice were implicated in such laws as far back as the 1950s when California declared rear view ornaments are illegal. Critics of the law have argued that the mandate often serves as a pretense to pull drivers over in the hopes of finding a more severe infraction. Now that we've explored the dicey origins and cultural significance of these fuzzy companions, we'd love to hear your thoughts and stories. You know, have you ever had fuzzy dice hanging in your car? If you have a Tri-5 Chevy, I'm sure you have. And like I said at the beginning of this video, it's it's usually the first thing I buy for any of my Tri-5 Chevys that I've owned. So if you are looking for a pair of dice for your Tri-5 Chevy, check out the link below where you'll find dozens of fuzzy dice in multiple colors. Also, do you think they should make a comeback or remain a nostalgic relic of the past so share your dice related experiences and comments below and don't forget to roll the like button if you enjoyed this journey through the old history of fuzzy dice. Please subscribe and like for more captivating tales from the past. And once again, thanks for riding along with us.